boom, a fresh crack for a fresh team. We got the New York football giants. Shout out to my brother, big Giants fan, real dickhead. Um, <laughs> it's just the loudest, worst guy to watch football with. Worst guy. And, it, you know, I, I grew up in the Philadelphia, New York area. Hate both teams. Niners fan went other coast with it. I was like, I'm not even that fucking with any of these guys. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, so we got the G men. Big D's going to uh, take us through this one. Big D, what you got on, on the G men? A little ode to Chris Bourbon there. There we go. Yeah, the G men, man. They, uh, they they had an interesting season to say the say the least. Um, they went nine nine seven and one one four and one in the division. Uh, fucking gave up a ton of points. You know they I think they gave up the most points in the division, but ended up in the playoffs and had a great game against Minnesota in round one. And and that's all with, uh, I mean I, I don't know it's 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 hard to name <laughs> some of the players that they that they were working with last year and you know and. And to just kind of um, get into to the nuts and bolts here, you know, if I mean, the, the obvious I think the player that is the most recognizable, regardless of who you are, right, is is Saquon, Saquon sure. Barkley. Um, you know, going into this, I watched a little bit, a little bit of tape. I watched a little bit of highlights. And if you watch anything that's highlights, it's like it's dominated by Saquon because he, he was he was holding it down there. But. But so was Dan- Daniel Jones. But but let's go back to Saquon just for a moment. I mean, he ended up RB5 points per game and overall. Um, the metrics that you see on the screen there are weeks one through seven. So if yours says a little bit different, get that week 18 out of here. <laughs> that shit out of here. I know that age is creeping in there. He's had some the injury concerns. But for me, man, Barkley is just he, – he's just so – he's so electric he's so so fun to watch you know when you love football and you just watch football he's he's a great <laughs> he's great period so um i'm going to talk about the offensive line here in a little bit but just a spoiler alert they were 20 no they were 30th last year so only only two teams worse than him and and saquon in my opinion crushed last year so yeah. um i don't know what what are your guys's thoughts feelings perspective on on mr barkley i'm i'm still very much uh very intrigued um you know a lot of people say he might have worn down a little bit through this end of the season last year didn't like quite as explosive and and i think i think that there's probably something to that coming off an injury and you know like you said being like a big catalyst of what was going on there um daniel jones kind of growing every that system kind of growing who the wide receivers over there is there's a carousel um you know real, bellinger was a little bit of a bright spot and then he just has a crazy freak injury uh as a rookie and and he goes out and so saquon was really i think carrying the torch for them and rightfully so got got a little fatigued at the end of the season um and, and might have might have slowed down a little bit and not been the saquon from the beginning of the season but I think he comes back this season and just fucking slays it again and probably going to do it again and again and again for three more seasons. So not worried about Saquon Barkley uh, long term, uh, still buying in, still very much interested. We got a little bit of a potential holdout situation. We're not really sure, but we don't know. So there's really no reason to talk about it. We're going to we're going to play this and talk about it as if it wasn't an issue. Yeah. Um, so uh, very, very uh down to take Saquon Barkley uh, over, say, a T. Higgins. Um, fine with that. Is that is anybody against that? See, see, yeah. You're yeah. against it. Yeah, man. Let me get T. Okay. Well, man, it's 26. Okay. There are, there are, like, there's. I just googled Saquon Barkley holdout, and there's like four articles about it in the last like 12 hours, and how it's not looking good. Yeah, well, it doesn't. We can't. There's no reason to talk about it right now because it doesn't matter. We're talking about it, a pure ranking situation. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to think about like, is Saquon going to play this year? You think he is? I don't know. I can't. I have no idea. So there's really no reason to let that weigh into anything right now. We got to let this. We got to talk about it as if he's. But playing. the uncertainty about he's gonna, it. He's has probably going to gonna play a little bit. He's most likely going to play. Um, and he's going to play again, right? Right. At some point. <laughs> right. Um, and for the sake of the argument, you know, if he plays week one, I, I think I'm, I'm, I, even if he doesn't play week one, I think I'm, I'm over Higgins. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not over Higgins. I'm, I'm Barkley over Higgins. Yeah. Um, I, I like Higgins. I always feel like I hate him just every time I, I talk because every, every, everyone on this show hates Higgins except me. 
Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you always take the over. Um, <laughs> Give me the over on Higgins all day. Uh, what about Gibbs? Gibbs or Barkley? They're going neck and neck. Neck and basically. neck. Gibbs, yeah. man. I've never taken get Barkley in any of these mocks. I can't see I've even, I'm even looking. Like I want Drake London. I think. Uh, like, I think. It, I think. I think what last year did for Saquon Barkley is let you get out of Saquon Barkley at a at a reasonable price. You know, because he was like almost dead before that. He like was it, not. He wasn't dead, but it was like detrimental. <laughs> it was. Wasn't. It was a he bummer. Was, he was just hurt for like two straight years. Yeah, he I mean, didn't do anything. And, and, he, and he was still, and the value was still really good. And I it think, was I think, really good because he was the first overall pick. Before I think. That. I think you're about to have Saquon until he's 30, and he's an elite pass catcher. Um, he's. I mean, an the elite, man's elite. He's an elite. He's elite run, all right. the way around. So well, I don't know. I don't really understand what we're upset about. Um, if you want to turn the page back to Gibbs, but there's unknown with Gibbs. We know Barkley is elite in this league. Gibbs um, is getting cut more slack. Sure. Um, Barkley don't won't get much more slack. We already saw what Barkley, happened. He got what I'm saying is is like he was still injured and he still got plenty of slack. Like and he came back and he was good last year and he faded a little bit down the stretch. People are just gonna be upset at running backs in general. Right. Like that's, that's that's part of what weighs into this for sure. Not for me. Not for Mr. me. Mr. I don't want to take a running back in this range. Uh, well, I I I've said multiple times that I don't really like I, outside inside the third round i want to i got three running backs i want to take and barkley isn't one of them never now when we're when we're slumping down to the edge of the third round which barkley is at three nine i'll take barkley as my rb1 like i certainly want barkley over kenneth walker etn and Najee harris all day every day not even close um sure and and really the only wide receiver i don't want him over is jsn probably and maybe maybe drake london but other than that, I'll take I'll take him over Cooper Cup. I'll take him over Diggs. Devonta Smith. Um, I'll probably take him over Devonta Smith. DK Metcalf. Take him over DK. I'd so, take him over Kelsey. Kelsey's yeah, higher, yeah, higher fine. up on the board, but I, I mean, I I to me Barkley Barkley over Kelsey and tight end. We're always talking tight end premium here, right, uh, boys? But but uh, I I'd, I'd still I would take him over Kelsey um, at this point in, in a startup. Gibbs is close and hard. It's a shiny new object. I think he's he is an elite pass catcher. It's TBD to see what the usage and what he's like as an actual ball in the gut guy. Uh, we know we know Gibson is uh, is is or we know uh, Barkley is is elite in both categories. For right. me, uh, the Lions' offensive line is good, which is going to be a plus for Gibbs. I think I would lean slightly Gibbs uh, there to answer okay. that question from way back. What are your way th- back? What are your thoughts in the way back machine? Um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't. I think it's 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 really a coin flip for me between the two. I'd, um, I probably would lean Barkley o- over Gibbs, um, but I think Gibbs is probably the the better value play. Uh, yeah, I, I think Barkley. I don't. I don't believe Gibbs has the high as high a ceiling as Barkley does. So that might be a hot take, but. But me personally, I, I think Gibbs got to learn the NFL. I mean, he's a rookie. I know he's I like know he's, he's a, a a running back, but he's he's a rookie. He's got to learn the NFL. He's got to learn. Uh, he's gonna have to learn. You're gonna learn today. <laughs> um, but but uh, but Barkley, um, to me, he he knows what he's doing. He knows the offense. He's got the chemistry. He plays, you know, he plays the uh, 17 games or whatever. I I, I think his. His ceiling, uh, well, last year he was what, um, RB5? I think his rookie year he's RB2, I believe. Don't have it off the One head. in PPR, according to Sleeper. Yeah, so, I mean, he's he's proven that he can be in that top five range, and I don't know if Gibbs can be, personally, like, for me. I, maybe he can be, um, but he, t- for me, he, it's a prove-it deal. Um, for for Barkley, he doesn't have to prove it to me. He's already done it. So, so for me, it's Barkley. It's just a it's five-year difference, you know? Yeah, uh, that's fine. If you want to play it that way, that makes sense. I think most people would agree with you, Every single Jason. Person there, but I mean, all two. I think. I think if you, I think if you want to win, I think the 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 proven the proven Barkley for me is is still it's hard hard for me to get get off of because I don't, you yeah. know, had some bad injuries there. But I mean, he could go from now until thirty without another single serious injury. So, and if that's the case, then I I, th- I think Barkley outperforms Gibbs probably every one of those years. Um, so, 
you know, Gibbs would still be hanging on and still be good. I don't think Gibbs is Saquon a bad player at all. Saquon definitely but. has the higher ceiling. I'm not arguing that. Yeah. And and that's where I'm at. I mean, I, I, I get the youth argument. I get I get all that stuff. Um, I, I just for for me it's it's Saquon pretty easy. Um but but I'm not gonna I'm I'm not going to uh poo poo on anybody that that goes Gibbs. So um so I think I think I, you guys have anything else on Barkley? No. I think we're good with Barkley. Let's pivot over to the other, uh, the second uh, best offensive Cut! player on the on the Giants, which would be. I'm gonna say <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Jones. Yeah, you're gonna say Daniel Jones, but it's Darren Waller, baby. All right. The walrus has, has come over and um, and he's he's geared up to just just have a tremendous season. I believe. I love uh, I love Waller for for quite a while. Obviously, he had some injuries last year. Um, but the dude just knows how to play. I, I can see you look at the, we haven't talked about the wide receivers yet, but you look at the wide receiving core and obviously they've, they've made some, um, made some additions. They've addressed some items, but just Waller himself, he's, he's going to be around the middle of the field where, where Daniel Jones likes to target, he, you know, some of those rollouts, some of the plays that Daniel Jones has to do because that offensive line is so horrid. Um, you know, he, Waller is, he's a huge giant <laughs> great catching object in the, in the middle of the field that can can cause some damage so so for me you know obviously i'm i'm big on daniel jones and i'm uh, i i sidestepped him for a moment there because i want to come back to him but but waller to me is um i don't know what would he be tight end tight end tight end nine, nine in our adp and adp nine in our adp but probably five in my heart um, yeah i, I mean I, th Kittle, I, I think i, I think, think he could I'd, i think he yeah. could honestly be tight end two or three for, for how the targets could break down in this offense. I mean, yeah, the giants wide receiver core is, you know, a lot deeper and, and better, I think moving forward this year, but it's still a bunch of, you know, not huge names, you know? Right. So a uh, Waller could come out there and be out wide in the slot in line, moved all over Dayball already seems like he's got a little bit of the magic touch. Uh, kind of what's going on and has proved I think that it w maybe wasn't necessarily a fluke that he took Josh Allen to the next level and now he I feel right. feels like he's doing the same thing with Daniel Jones which yeah. a lot of people did have some faith in in that organization and some guys some former players who had been around the team a little bit thought that there was a lot of good stuff there and he's bringing it out and Waller could be the uh, his, his go-to guy here and I, I think it's been it's been hard for me not to take Waller in, in a lot a lot of drafts here especially and tight end premium I should say. Yeah, and tight end premium, and and you know why why we like Kelsey and and Andrews is because of the volume. You know, right. obviously they're great players too, but but um, volume is king when it comes to tight ends. And and Waller, as you just so elegantly put, uh, Waller, Waller's uh, Waller's r top in the charts there for for targets from from Mr. Daniel Jones. Yeah. All right. Well, you want to take us over to DJ? Yeah, let's I know talk about I know that's your guy. Oh, that's my dude. He's man. got movement. <laughs> if, I, if every team I have my, um, Miles Sanders and Daniel Jones, I'm I'm, you know, I'm happy. Um, yeah, it's like watch out, watch out for the socks. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> for the Daniel Jones. <laughs> Daniel Jones. Uh, he uh, ended up ten Ooh. overall through weeks one through seventeen. Uh, Fourteen points per game. Um, I, I kind of alluded that his his offensive line was. Um, was there but that was about about it they were they were they were they struggled a bit we'll just say and um you know uh let's see daniel jones he ended with 3200 yards 15 touchdowns five interceptions but he had 67 percent um completion rating um he also added 708 yards on the ground um, yeah 700 yards yeah on 120 carries it's hard for me to believe that he you know obviously outside of injury to him himself mm -hmm. it's hard for me to believe that he's going to perform at a lower level than he did this last year um obviously they paid him they paid him the bag he's you know he's got he got a good chunk he's got a good chunk but i mean you know quarterback 10 and you're drafting there and he's uh I'm trying to see QB that 16 16 yeah qb 16 i mean he should just give me, five million time. to uh just give five million to saquon just be like here bud just come on, let's play. Here's <laughs> yeah. five million. Uh, just yeah. take it. You know, One year guaranteed. Give us a couple miles. We'll take a couple. 
Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Uh, QB sixteen uh, to cut. I cut you off there, but you you were finishing up with screaming value. I, I I would agree. I would say it would seem like properly rated though in ADP wise around where he what where like the guys that he's around four four. That's hot, right? As I, I think I think. I think some of those other guys that are up there should the QB wise should slide down a little bit, and I would I'd be fine with leaving Daniel Jones kind of where he is ish, and then yeah. if you wanted to even slide him down below Ramondre and be five one, I'd be fine with that. Um, but how how are you? You're fine with four four DJ? Oh yeah, I'm fi- I'm fine with it. I mean yeah. I'm I uh, I've Big built D's a, I've been built teams propping with that uh, ADP up. I think. No, I, I think could be, yeah. every, everybody's into it. I mean, it's just like you said. I mean, he was, what, yeah. QB7, QB9 last year? Mm-hmm. And I can't – I don't see it going backwards either. Everything should be a little better and more comfortable in the system. So, you yeah. know, I think I think at worst you're even. And then he's outperforming where he is. And he's – he's a lot of teams got probably got to the playoffs on the back of Daniel Jones last year. Now the value is gone in the draft. Um, but I think it's still fine uh, where you're taking him because he, I think he is still outperforming ADP. Yeah, I mean, if he's my if he's my QB two, uh, it's like, oh man, it's I don't know. The bells are ringing. I'm I'm. It's gonna I'm be crusty socks everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, no no doubt, buddy. But um, <laughs> but if he's my fourth fourth player off the board and he's my first quarterback, if I'm building that way, I I'm okay with it. I. I think he can hold down a QB one spot, especially if you talk to three, you know, three blue chips before that in your startup. I mean, um, obviously, I'm, I'm I'm super excited about him. I've been excited about him uh, early last season. I started to really rise on him, and um, and he's 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 proven that he can perform. Um, I I don't I don't get the hate on him. Um, I mean. Except the, for that the, block face that he's got, he's got a very blocky face. Eyes are too close. Yeah, together. but that's a requirement, I think, as a giant. I yeah, mean, you know, Eli. I mean, yeah. you know, I think that's just you have to have that certain look there. Yeah, so, he's, he um, can't. It's hard to win with an ugly quarterback, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think I would. I think you know he's a com a common pivot uh, kind of quarterback for me. <laughs> Whereas like Dak, all the guys above him after we pass Anthony Richardson and we get mm-hmm. into our ADP here, Dak. Not Kyler, I would, I'd stick with Kyler, but Dak, yeah, Bryce Young, mm-hmm. Tua, C.J. Stroud, all those guys ahead of him. I'd be trying to pivot down to Daniel Jones and gain a little uh, plus plus there on the value side of things, uh, and I'd be fine with that. It's just not cool, man. So what? It ain't cool. What's not cool? Daniel Jones. Yeah, he's not fine. Cool. He could stay a little uncool, and I'll move off all those guys and gain. Those other guys are way cooler. I'll gain. So uh, cool. I'll gain some you know value. what's cool is championships, and championships. He, he has the, uh-huh. the ability to 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 give. Well, ain't nobody yeah. want to win a championship, Big D. We just want a sexy roster, okay? Yeah, and Daniel Jones it, is the opposite of sexy. That's that's very true. But for me, I'm I'm all about championships. I I want to I want to win the game that we're playing, and and um, I I think that he he has the ability to be one of your key key cogs at a at a really decent value. So. Um, to pivot into the wide receivers, I, it, let's just throw out one more stat. So Daniel Jones was seventh in deep ball um, passer rating, mm-hmm. um, ninth in deep ball completion, and then they added, you know, if you look at what they did at the wide receiver position, which we'll we'll switch over to here, they added some compliments there. I believe Jalen Hyatt, man, that was weird. <laughs> um, the Jalen Hyatt, they added Jalen Hyatt with uh, Paris Campbell. My spot, thank you. Yeah, Paris Campbell, Slayton was. Brought slain back. before his injury he, yeah. he they brought him back daniel jones was targeting the middle of the field quite a bit um partially because he just didn't have a lot of time to throw they've improved the offensive line a little bit i think that um gives him a little bit more time to see the field um and and with the addition of hyatt i can i can definitely see a positive i don't know i guess i was gonna say positive regression but he was already qb t- uh QB 10 overall. So I, I can't really say regression, but, but at least like you said, staying, staying even, uh, this wide receiver thing. room is the best argument that they can be, anybody can make for Daniel Jones last year. Like he didn't yeah. have anyone to throw it to. Yeah. I mean, and he was Wanda still would come in and get help, hurt. Right. Sterling Shepard had good periods, but sure. got hurt again. Slayton, Slayton had a couple hurt. games. Hodgins, Hodgins came in like week six. It yeah. was nice. 
startable uh, for, for them. your wide receiver three. Traded to the team in like week six, and then all of a sudden had had a couple of nice streaks there. Um, yep. So Kenny Galladay, nothing right. Like, just a just nothing for my man. Like a little yeah. spurts of something, and no tight end to speak of really. Like well, just, Bellinger got hurt. Uh, I who poked was coming out. On. Like, yeah, just yep. nothing for yep. and Saquon hurt part of the year too. So like. That's the best argument you can make, really, for Daniel Jones is just the lack of weapons. And not that it's that much better this year. At least they're not paying Kenny Galladay, but, yeah. you know. Oh, it's, uh, it's way better this year. Way, way better. Yeah. So much. There's, With there's, just Hyatt coming in? There's, that's it? No, well, that's not it. There's, there's, there's depth here now. All of a sudden, you do have Wandell in a second year. You have Sterling Shepard, who came back. They brought in Jamison Crowder. You have Paris Campbell. Crowder. You bring Slayton back. You have Isaiah Hodgins now, who is probably going to be your primary outside wide receiver who's going to be had been through an offseason and starting through several games last year you None have that's Hyatt. exciting anybody, it it's, though. it's not it's about not. being exciting it's so like listen to what you were just saying from last year all yeah. those guys were kind of there and they added a few more and they were all hurt so it's just like you now have some depth you add waller in there who's essentially waller. a wide receiver you have barkley who was a, essentially another wide receiver uh you bring in another depth piece in eric gray to be behind Saquon Barkley um so you know you and you have Bellinger still so there's just there's way more continuity and depth there all all along everything and I'm very interested I'm I'm buying Paris Campbell super late in drafts I'm buying mm -hmm. Wandell Robinson every single time yeah. in drafts I'm buying Isaiah Hodgins late in drafts it's much like the Houston Texans here where I'm down to buy as much of this receiving core because it's cheap as possible and who gives a shit like it doesn't mm -hmm. cost you anything i think wandell showed you that he can be good he could be a ppr machine just needs to stay healthy um yep you know i think isaiah hodgins gives him something that and they have a nice mixture of things here they have isaiah hodgins who can give you size outside give you a red zone target hyatt you get good speed paris campbell they're kind of saying there you're going to use him as a bit of the bit more of the gadget guy handoffs out of the backfield and we know he can get deep if he can stay healthy wandell and sterling uh both great chain moving guys um you have slayton uh who can be an outside over the top guy so you have all sorts of different guys who can play different roles you have jameson crowder who's familiar with this bill system uh was with uh dayball over there in buffalo so I, I really like what the Giants offense did, and I'm buying a lot of them as cheap as I can, um, in particular Wandell for sure earlier, and then at least one of Hodgins or Campbell. I, I saw some people talking shit about Hodgins. Like, if you have Hodgins on your team, he probably had a bunch of Travis Fulgham or some shit like that. It's like, dude, Hodgins gives you... If you don't have Hodgins on your team, you weren't paying attention and didn't pick this right. man up off the fucking waiver what wire. What a fantastic free. free waiver wire pickup. And, and, and he's a plug. still like a... He's a plug. Still, Right, you plugged him in and he got you some wins. You talking um, shit about people who have Hodges on your team? Right, this is a just, bad tweet. It's just people who don't respect the lower end of the of the depth chart and don't play big big rosters, rosters and big, and only starting lineups. like the only guys that are ever good are the top five best players in the league. Uh, those are the kind of idiots that you're probably taking fantasy advice from. Um, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Um, We're your favorite dynasty podcast. Favorite, favorite dynasty, dynasty podcast, podcast for sure. Um, so I, again, sorry to hijack your wide receiver segment no. there, uh, but I, I do like kind of what's there. And Daniel Jones, I think, is just you know in, in much better position. Uh, it's nothing sexy. There isn't a sexy guy on there, and I know it's all about. <laughs> I mean, Saquon's sexy. Saquon's sexy but I mean, but that's the running he's back. He's twenty six, so it's like oh, this old broad. Yeah, you know, are sexy, uh, but you know the rest, you know, is not. But I'm 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 into drafting him. You must. I think Wandell's a must-have on every yeah, team. Yeah, you got to get Wandell. It's too yeah. easy to not get Wandell. Oh, let me just pull up his ADP. It's affordable. It it's is like affordable. 14th round, 13-9, wide receiver 59. We, we got to have Wandell. Um, and Hodgins is like 20th, and I don't even know where Paris Campbell is, but get one of the two. Anyway, Big D, what else you got for us, Big Dog? I think you, I mean, you covered most of it. I, I, Wandell's right around Hyatt and our, our FFD ADP. Are you going Hyatt or Wandell? Wandell. Okay. Jeez. Are you going Hyatt? Um, I think I might. Okay. I, um, I think Hyatt, uh, I think Wandell has the higher ceiling, but the way that it feels like they're trying to scheme this offense, I think he could be a very big contributor and, and he's a decent player, a decent prospect, uh, third round pick, I believe. I think I'm going Hyatt, but yeah, I mean, Wandell is, is definitely 
definitely worth the squeeze. I mean, the 13th round, like you said, you, you could trade in how to start up on the 13th round pretty easy and, mm-hmm. and grab, you know, grab a few of these targets. Um, and that, that, that might be the play or, or even wait to the ball, the ball hits the field and then, and then look, you know, yeah, cause um, he's, he's probably going to miss, miss a little bit of the beginning of the season. Potentially it was a later yeah. ACL for Wandell. So, right. Yeah, it was just so much, so much good that you saw from him. Like even in the small sample size, when I'm looking at this ADP list, like Darno Mooney stands out, Wandale stands out. I see Sky Moore, but I don't ever really take him. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. And then like Rondale, Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell, Rondale. I'm, I'm, like, I'm down to the wide receiver. Let me get like I, you know, Mitchell had his flash. I missed out on selling the peak Mitchell, and he could have some value but when you're in these rounds like who can actually jump up in value like that's why i see sky more because he could jump up in value value, so could hyatt but wandale and and rondale still i mean maybe rondale can't even if rondale's good he doesn't get respect he'll be he could he could jump up he could jump i guess he's late enough um but wandale uh, is probably going to miss some time but i could see that's an easy five round jump if he's on the field just being a PPR mm-hmm. machine. It does seem like Hyatt may take a minute to really catch on and be fantasy relevant, but he could get those good highlights to help him jump up. Um, yeah. So I could see him kind of being a little bit more of a role player in, into this season. And they've kind of alluded to the fact that there is some work there with Hyatt a little bit, but anywho. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing else I got for you boys on, on, uh, on the giants is seven and a half wins over under. Or yet. I'll take Where over. Yet? I'll take the over. Man, fuck the NFC East. Eagles losing a couple extra <laughs> this year. It is a fun. It's fun when they play each other because like the records don't matter. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're not like the AFC Northward. So just a defensive slobber knocker with some weird score, some weird low scoring score. Take I mean, the under we're, on those matches. We're, we're gonna take the over on the. A- a- NFC East matchups. Probably going to put the Commanders at the doorstep of the of the division. Eagles, Cowboys won twelve games Eagles last at year. The top of the Eagles are fucking then awesome. The right Giants now. probably going to be you know nine win trying team. to get that second wild card spot. Yeah, seven and a half. That seems a little low. I got to give my man Dayball you're a little our, more credit. You're our than over that. guy though, so I don't even want to. Jay Wayne's going over. Go under. I don't want to do it. But seven and a half <laughs> seems low. Like that'd yeah. be a major step back, and you don't think Dabble and this whole team is gonna stay take a step forward? Yeah, I would assume so. You got to take the over. Hmm. I'd agree. Yeah, I think I'm on the over. I think they're 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 playing what the NFC West this year as well. So not got, well. Yeah, I was just saying, not good. But you know, you got the Seahawks; they stink. You got the Rams; they stink. <laughs> you got the Cardinals; <laughs> they stink. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Keep dreaming, buddy. Ah, uh, unfortunately, the Seahawks unfortunately, are gonna the be. Seahawks, yeah, they gonna be like steal. Brittany. They're back, bitches. <laughs> yeah, they got they got the Cardinals early too, so that, yeah. that could factor into Kyler. So yeah, I think I, I'd take the over for them. I um, they they ended up nine wins last year with a tie in there. Um, I, I seven and a half just seems a little low for me. Just yeah. just kind of eyeballing their schedule in any given Sunday, right? Who knows injuries, all that kind of stuff, but. Man, I, I really, really like Dayball. Um, the dude is just—he's proven it at—he's proving it time and time again at every stop he's going to. He's bringing in talent around him from the coaching perspective, and, um, and yeah, so, and, he doesn't have to prove it trust. anymore. It's time to give him the benefit of the doubt. For real, like they already yeah. were. People already were, but then look what he just did. You know, it's just again, reaff- yeah. reaffirmation of what people thought, and he's—he's he's gold. Yeah, you know, I agree. Yep, it's football gold. Fat bald dude after my own art. Yeah. So Saquon, Daniel Jones, let's go. <laughs> and Waller. We'll and Waller. Waller. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I guess I'm yeah. gonna be watching a lot of the fucking Giants with my brother. He claps a lot. <laughs> he's a loud clapper. He fucking. Oh, he's, he's a clapper. He's, he's like, uh, enjoyed, uh, yeah. He really would. Uh, Jason Garrett. He hasn't yeah. been coming around that much recently in yeah. recent years because they haven't been that good. But now I guess oh, he's he's been up to things too on the weekends. So. Been up to things. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> are we all invited to the house? Or are you trying to do siloed uh, Sundays? I'm probably going to be going mostly solo on Sundays. Dude, what am I supposed to do? It's been years. You can, you have your own house. So? <laughs> so? Every fourth Sunday, you can come up. Every fourth <laughs> Sunday? 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It is more accessible now that YouTube TV yeah, is. Yeah, of course. That's why everybody came over because I'm the only idiot who ha had to keep. <laughs> everybody else was like, oh, can we come over? We don't have direct TV. And I'm like, well, somehow I managed to have it, you jerk offs. <laughs> like, yeah, and there's dinner over there and cookies. Oh, man. And my kid has a friend to play with. I'm, I think my mom's going to be taking the kid on Sunday. So. Oh, wow. We'll, we'll, right. make, we'll have the baby, baby, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, they're, they're pretty the baby, They're baby. pretty easy at that point. Just throw, oh, yeah. throw a couple peanuts at them, throw them in a rocker, you know. Yeah, Daddy, a age, we'll be in Chicago in no time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zero to, well, 10, anywhere from 10 to 15 months. It's pretty easy, but once as long they start, as it's not your kid. <laughs> once they start walking. Not your kid, I'm just saying somebody else's kid. No, I get it. It's always hilarious when someone else's kid is acting like an asshole. I just like find it so hilarious. I'm thinking about getting. <laughs> one, I'm thinking about getting one of those uh, those fly salt guns and just shooting my kid with the salt gun when it's being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Not advisable. Like I wish I had one of those fly salt guns. <laughs> I saw that they have a pistol now with a CO2 cartridge. Oh Jesus! Oh, that's probably more powerful than the. Yeah, I probably don't need to shoot her that way if I get it. <laughs> the CO2 in, cartridge. Catch her in the eye, or one goes in her ear. <laughs> she already got. Already got ear problems. Ear issues. Although they're solved, right? There she's good. Uh, we're having full hearing, no? Surgery, J June. Another uh, one? July 29th, I think. Another surge? It's, yeah, it's just kind of a follow-up. Oh, man. Getting the adenoids out, too. Got to get the monkeys out of there. I think there's some HIPAA laws here, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we'll catch you next we blew time. It with the salt guns. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, if all this, <laughs> has, if this hasn't earned a five star review on the iTunes or the Spotify, yeah. I don't know what will. Okay, hit subscribe, hit like, so, show your boys some love. To clear it up, that's a turkey call, not the putty patrol from the, from the, uh, what was it, the Power Rangers? They also made that noise. <laughs> you remember that? The putty, yeah, the putty that. patrol. They'd be like, they say patrol. Woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, once we get the sound bite, I guess it'll make more sense. The, the turkey is now. from the turkey call is from Liar Liar, which you on the Patreon her shows. like a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. All right. You're such a better lover than my husband. <laughs> Appreciate you. How do we know the man on that tape is not Mister? I forget Cole. what his name. Cole Mr. himself. Cole. <laughs> You're such a better lover than my husband. <laughs> Your Honor, I object. Why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating in my case. Overruled. Good call. What a fucking amazing exchange of lines. The probably the most underrated comedy of... of Jim Carrey's, Jim Carrey's career. career. Yeah, I would say it's the Daniel Jones. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play to tie it together. And on that note, we are out. Peace.